All right. So I am, I've layered three images. They're all basically background images. All of them are not the same color or lighting, right? And I can change all of that and make it work. And I can work with their placements still. Now we get into the slightly more fun stuff. Because if I use my sketch as the guide, and that's the whole intention here, one way we can do that is like with the shape composition, I can move my sketch all the way to the top layer, set it to 50% now that you guys know what I'm doing. Maybe even less, because mine's a pretty bold sketch, so I can even probably move it to 20%, just so I can see it, and then lock it. Very important to lock it, otherwise it's always going to be selecting it when I'm trying to select the layers underneath it. So now, what's next? The water tower. So I go to the Move tool, Auto Select, and I move the water tower in, but it's too far back in the layer, so I can do Command right bracket, move it up through, kind of place it in. That's a little big, so I'm going to do Command T while well, it's still a smart layer. Get its shape. Hit Return. And this is a really good example. I don't want those hard edges. I don't want this sky. So I am forcing myself to make clear distinctions about what I want and don't want by lassoing with rough edges, a rough selection with the lasso tool to select that part of it. Now I selected what I wanted, not what I don't want. So I'm not erasing, I am duplicating. I do Command J and if, the, the, if that's the shortcut for edit, let's see, where is that? It's the duplicate option. It's somewhere. I've just always done Command J. <laughs> Command J to duplicate. And it will take my smart layer and it will duplicate onto a new layer that selection, which automatically changes it from being a smart layer to a rasterized layer that I can edit. Then I move my smart layer down out of the way. And I'm going to bring my last element in, which is this ice flow. Command T. This is why I love organic stuff. I'm not just going to take it as it is. I'm actually going to distort it a little bit to match my sketch. Why not? I can even warp it. Organic, organic stuff is more flexible than man-made stuff. The water tower is going to look weird if I warp it. It's going to look Looney Tunes. But with mountain ranges, with clouds, with bushes, as long as I don't break the rules of physics, I can warp it. Um, the newest version of Creative Cloud 2018 allows you to warp smart objects. That's a big change and very, very helpful. So even though I warped it, it's still a smart object. It's still referencing the original file. And that's why Photoshop is so expensive. They keep making improvements. And then other programs take a while to catch up. So that's why it's the professional standard. OK, I'm going to select around it, Command J. And now move that smart layer out of the way. And now if I turn off my sketch, I see my composition with one notable difference. I don't have the edges of my composition yet. So we are going to give ourselves our boundaries. And we're going to do that with, with guides. Guides are lines we see in Photoshop but are not printed, aren't pixel based. So you go to the Move tool, you have your rulers turned on. We always want our rulers turned on. If they are not turned on, you'll see them at the edge of your frame. You just hit Command-R to turn rulers off and on. Once your rulers are on, you use the Move tool, you click on the ruler, and you drag down a guide. So I'm going to drag down two vertical guides. We're going to be using these a lot for layouts. And then two vertical guides. So two horizontals from the top, two verticals from the side. And then I turn off my sketch, and I see, OK, this is the area that I sketched. And that's the area I need to worry about. Why do I keep stuff that's outside of that? Well, I might resize it. I might need to change it. So there's no reason to crop yet. 
Now we get into the erasing, the selecting and the erasing. So I'm going to save my work at this point. So I say file, save, as, because this is no longer a first sketch, this is just assignment one, PSD file in process to the desktop. I can hit, or I can look to the side and see that it's there. There it is, should have a lot of gray around it. It's gonna take up a lot of memory. So mine is taking up 738 megabytes. If it's taking up like over a gig of memory, what I would recommend is actually deleting your smart layers. Because once you have the copies of them, then you can actually just delete each of these. It will really reduce your memory. And you can always get those back because you have that reference in a reference folder. Does that make sense to everyone? All right, so if you need to save memory, just get rid of your smart layers. So now this is very rational. I have my sketch kind of floating on the top at 50% locked, and I have five cutout layers all stacked on top of each other. Now I have to start editing them. So I'm going to work from the back forward because I don't want to waste time smoothing things I don't need. So the first layer I need to work on is this one. And it's the mountain range. And the first thing I need to get rid of are my hard edges. And I can always be looking at my sketch. I might even have my sketch open in preview off to the side here. So I can kind of see what I meant. So I need a middle ground mountains. So this is number four. So even though this has its own clouds, I don't really want those clouds. Now there are a few ways I can go about selecting this. I could take my freehand lasso and I could try to cut out these mountains, but is that gonna be very accurate? Not unless I really zoomed in and really took time, right? You can use the magnetic watching. Well, that's even gonna be less accurate. So I can zoom in to where I can actually see the pixels and I can add to my lasso and draw around. All right, like so. And I can subtract from my lasso and cut around like so. You hold down Option to subtract from a selection. You hold down Shift to add to it. But that's just going to take a whole lot of time. And you know what? This isn't like a man-made structure in the foreground where edges need to really be sharp. So instead, what I'm going to do is use my eraser tool. And for the first time, we're going to use our brush settings. I want a standard brush that is pressure sensitive. And I want to play with its softness. I want the soft edged brush at 100% opacity with 0% smoothing, 100% flow. These are the default settings. And I want its size to be pretty big. I'd say at least 400 pixels. Now watch what happens when I erase with this brush. Because it's 100% opacity, the center of the circle will erase every trace of that hard edge, but the edges of it being soft will start to ghost and blend in with the pixels behind it. So do you ever erase from your, your background layer? No, because you need that to be a 100% pixels, right? That's why we have to make sure we fill up all the white space of our sketch before we start doing this kind of thing. Okay, now this is without any color correction, but just because we have those blue pixels mixing into the red and purple pixels behind, it's starting to look more believable, right? So next thing I'm gonna do is play with color before I start doing really precise correction. So I'm still just playing with this mountain layer and I'm gonna use what are called direct image adjustments, not layer adjustments, nothing that's indirect. I'm gonna just change the pixels in the layer. And we do that by going to image adjustments. These are direct image adjustments. And we've used levels before a little bit and that's always a good place to start. Notice that this image is a lot darker this image is a lot brighter, different times of day, different lighting. So the first thing I want you to play with levels on all of your references is the mid-tone 
histogram marker, this middle gray triangle. If you push it to the right, you're going to be darkening the midtones. If you push it to the left, you're going to be brightening the midtones. My midtones should go a little bit darker here. I'm squinting, I'm seeing at the contrast in that sky, even though the colors are still way off. That's very simple. Sometimes you need to goose the highlights. Sometimes you need to goose the shadows. But the danger with these is whenever I do this, if there's actually information at the sides of the histogram, I will lose it. So now that's called blasting out, and I've lost pixel content. Things that weren't white before are now just solid white. So that's why I don't even mess with these too much. I just play with the middle because it's safer. Then I say, okay, the next direct adjustment is going to be color balance. It's probably my favorite one. This is the temperature of color. So it's not going to make the blue sky purple, right, or green. That would be a color replacement or hue saturation change. This is just going to change the temperature because this is much warmer light. So I'm going to shift the temperature again of the midtones first towards yellow and towards red and towards magenta. And notice how that starts to, to work with that background color a lot more. Now, I'm not going to try to make everything match that background because that's too purple and too strong. Instead, I'm going to push everything towards each other, right? So I do that a little bit, and I think, oh, that's a little too much magenta for me. I like that my highlights are staying clean. I like that my shadows are staying cool. So maybe about there I'm comfortable with. Then I can go to my background layer, and I can play with levels and maybe brighten up the midtones a little bit, just a little bit. And then I can go to color balance. These are called direct adjustments. And I can take out a little bit of the magenta and put in a little bit more of the cyan. You see how they're starting to, to um, fit in the same world a little bit. Add a little bit of blue back in because the yellow isn't what I need. And now the highlight is a little red. I'm going to take a little bit of that red out of the highlight little bit of that that yellow out okay now I'm liking that now I can go back in and I can lock that background layer so I don't accidentally erase from it because that would be bad and instead I continue erasing very small little clicks you can use your tablet but I'm still erasing at 100%. Today, I only want you to erase at 100%, but you can use a soft edge brush if you need to. Okay, and then I'm getting to where I'm, I'd be erasing mountains that I wanna keep if I kept going. So that's good for now. I can zoom in and I can see how that transition works. And I see something that I don't love to see but this is what's called ISO grainy, graininess. Because that photo was taken at night of lightning, it had to have a really high ISO on the camera, which is like film grain that's really fast. And notice that it looks different than this. It looks smoother. So that just tells me, okay, note to self, I need something to, to add into that sky to smooth it out. But that's not my goal yet. That's a finishing thing later. Right now I'm just playing with the color, the lighting, and the rough placement of my elements. So now I move to my next element. Same thing. Before I even mess with erasing away from it, I might lock the one underneath. Before I start doing this, <laughs> though that's gonna work really well, uh, I'm gonna play immediately with the levels. I'm gonna darken these levels a little bit because there's some strong darks in that background but only the midtones. And then I'm gonna play with the color balance. There's a ton of cyan in that lighting, so I'm gonna push it more towards the reds, more towards the magentas, a little bit more towards the yellows. And I'm gonna play with the shadows because the shadows are a little bit too cyan too. And then I can start erasing but this is a narrower range, 